Stoicism was started by a man named Zeno around 300 BC. I believe he was born 334 BC um, in Cetium, Cyprus. So we call him Zeno of Cetium. And Zeno was a wealthy merchant and his ship was shipwrecked. He lost everything. He washed ashore in Athens where he walked to a bookstore, went into the bookstore and read Xenophon's memorabilia um, and he was so fascinated in Socrates that he said to the owner of the bookstore, um, where do I find men like Socrates? And just as he said this, fate happens to be that Crates is walking past and he was the most famous cynic at the time and the bookstore owner says, that's a man like Socrates. So I don't know what happened next, but Zeno is talking with Crates perhaps and he begins to study under Crates and he learns a lot from him and then he studies under many other philosophers and after a, a while he starts teaching philosophy to crowds. Um, he didn't have a place to teach so he would actually go into public at the Stoa Poikile which translates to the Painted Porch and that is where it gets, Stoicism gets its name from, from the Stoa Poikile and um, for anyone that doesn't know, I'll probably put a picture up, but it's like those columns. Originally, Stoicism was called Zenonism or Zenonism um, after his name, Zenoism. Um, but then the name got dropped and it became Stoicism. One thing to note is actually, this is why I started this channel, The Everyday Stoic, with the tagline Stoicism for All, because um, philosophy was reserved for the wealthy and the elites and Zeno went out into the street and taught everyone um, the poor anyone no matter where you're from he would he would teach his philosophy to you and that's what I like I believe philosophy is often reserved for people in university or college uh, or people who have access to um, this study and I just want to teach it to everyone because I believe it can help everyone so stoicism is for all it can help everyone and so some of the people that can't get access to these philosophies are the people that need it most I believe most people often get interested in Stoicism because of, um, they believe it will help build mental resilience. That's what I see the most, the mental resilience side of Stoicism. And that actually leads to the misconception of Stoicism that it makes you emotionless or manly, whatever that means. But I see it a lot everywhere. And mental resilience is actually a part of Stoicism, but it's only a fraction. So the the great goal, the ultimate goal of Stoicism is eudaimonia, which doesn't have a direct translation, but the one I like is human flourishing. That's the one that resonates with me most, and it just means living to your full potential in a way. So eudaimonia is achieved when we live in accordance with nature, and nature is the occurrence of everything in the universe, the way things are in the universe, the, the place we have in the universe. The Stoics had a view of the universe that I would compare to fate. So living in accordance with nature is to embrace one's own fate, which can be summed up with the phrase amor fati, which means the love of one's fate. Epictetus had this to say, Demand not that events should happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do happen, and you will go on well. To live in accordance with nature is also to live a virtuous life. Now, vices oppose nature, so vices are to be avoided. That's what the Stoics believed, that vices are bad. The four virtues of Stoicism are courage, wisdom, temperance, and justice justice being the most important virtue. Wisdom is the understanding of what is good, bad and indifferent. Wisdom gives space for introspection. It allows us to make logical decisions based off of the virtues. Courage allows us to stand up for what is right. It means we may risk ourselves to help others. It means that despite fear we do what is right. And when people tell us lies we may stick to what is true despite the risk. Greed can lead to our demise. We need the discipline to moderate ourselves. Temperance can guide us to living more harmoniously and not to damage our own character. Often we can be content with the things that we have, 
but greed leads us to the feeling of wanting more and the feeling of not having enough. When I think of temperance, I often think of the story of Diogenes the Cynic, who was a famous cynic at the time, and he was famous for having nothing and being content with what he had, which is odd. He was a famous man for having nothing, and he couldn't care less about the notoriety he had. But um, there's a story of Alexander the Great, who was the most powerful man at the time. Um, he, he encountered Diogenes, and he thought he would offer Diogenes a gift. He said, what can I give you? And Diogenes looked up at Alexander the Great. He raised his hand, and he said, move out of the way of the sun, um, which I think is a great story. But then Alexander the Great said to Diogenes, if I were not Alexander the Great, then I would be Diogenes. Diogenes probably thought to himself that I'd rather be Diogenes anyway. Diogenes didn't want anything, so he had everything he wanted. Whereas Alexander the Great had everything in the world, but he still wanted more. So he was still left with that feeling of, of wanting more. And although it's an extreme case, temperance can help us live within moderation and um, not to live within excess and, and that feeling of wanting more. Um, which I, I think is very important. The last and most important virtue is justice. Justice means we don't live in a manner that hurts people and we strive to help others where we can. Now the reason justice is the most important virtue is without it, all the other virtues only act to help ourselves. And as Marcus Aurelius said, what is good for the hive is good for the bee. So um, stoicism is about um, taking action to help others, which I think people misconcept thinking stoicism is about self, it's actually about the world around us. So we live virtuously in accordance with nature, that is the goal. So in the meditations Marcus Aurelius had this to say, don't ever forget these things, the nature of the world, my nature, how I relate to the world, what proportion of it I make up, that you are part of nature, and no one can prevent you from speaking and acting in harmony with it, always. So what I like about Stoicism is that the ultimate goal is achievable by, achievable by everyone. Similar to Nirvana in Buddhism or Mukti in Sikhism, anyone can attain it by following this guidance. I think it's great that Marcus Aurelius, who was the most powerful man at the time, and one of the most powerful men in history, and Epictetus, who was a slave, are both aiming for the same goal of eudaimonia and that makes them equal it makes them their their character is equal what what is considered the most important principle in stoicism is the dichotomy of control it's a very simple concept and it can be understood very quickly but once you understand it it can really help change your life actually almost instantly epictetus had this to say the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can clearly say to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. So simply put, some things are within our power, others are not. Within our power, opinion, motivation, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever is of our own doing, not within our control. Our body, our property, our reputation, office, and in a word, whatever is not of our own doing. What the dichotomy of control does for us is, in this world, when there's so much noise from social media, from the news, from everyone around us, um, it fills our heads with all this noise, and we have so much worry and anxiety about things outside of our control, such as what this celebrity is doing, or what this friend is doing, or even just the rain outside. We can't control these things and it can really get us down. Whereas if we understand this is out of our control, then we can begin to focus on what's important and what is within our control. It, it just makes things seem a little clearer and it really helps move us towards progress, at least for me and many other people that I've heard from. So the way I like to see it is that stoicism teaches us that we can view our emotions and events like a stream passing by. You know, stoicism helps us stand on that bank, whereas normally we're stuck within the stream and the current and it's washing us about and everything's a bit of a blur. 
um, but as we stand on the bank and with wisdom we can view these events and some that provoke us we can view them without bias we can take a pause for reflection and then develop the right response instead of just reacting like that like an animal and that's another thing about nature is that hum human nature is that we have this introspection we have this wisdom so we can act upon that animals are more reactive they react in anger um, they don't think about the consequences like we do between stimulus and response there is a space in that space is our power to choose our response in our response lies our growth and freedom so this was said or written by Viktor Frankl who was an Austrian neuroscientist a psychologist and a Holocaust survivor he wrote possibly my favorite book Man's Search for Meaning, which I recommend to everyone. Understanding the dichotomy of control has really helped me see life from a different perspective, that when these events happen to us, we don't have to become victim to them. We can actually change our perspective and see things as a lesson. Rude people can be a lesson for patience, which carries on into our life. Um, traffic can be a lesson, another lesson for patience. Or, or some challenges become a lesson for courage. It, we can develop our courage from this challenge. And as Ryan Holiday said, the obstacle is the way. So that's what I like to see things. That's how stoicism's helped change my perspective, is that problems can often become a lesson for us. It's just a small pers perspective change that's really helped me become a calmer person. Rather than letting a rude person ruin your day, you can think back to yourself and go, I developed a lot of strength of character and patience because that person challenged me. A popular phrase, one of the most popular phrase in Stoicism is memento mori. It roughly means remember that you will die or remember your mortality. Stoicism teaches us one of life's most basic facts is that we will die, other people will die and nothing lasts forever. So death makes our lives meaningful and important. It creates priority and gives perspective to focus on what is important in our lives. It creates that urgency to live our lives. So most people are crippled by the thought of death and it actually holds them back from living. Memento Mori also relates to belongings, that we won't have these things forever, so don't become attached to them. And as Mike Skinner from the street said, everything is borrowed. It's this attachment that makes the thought of losing something so bad or the act of losing something even worse. If someone's favorite mug broke, someone you didn't know or someone at your work, the favorite mug broke, it wouldn't upset you. If their favorite shirt was ruined in the wash, it wouldn't make you angry. If their car was keyed, it wouldn't make you angry. It's your attachment to your favorite mug or your favorite shirt or your car that evokes this emotion. So the Stokes like to believe that you can separate yourself from that, that you just see it as a mug a shirt, a car, and when you break your favorite mug, you can just get another mug. So there are many popular exercises that we can do in Stoicism. Um, I won't go over all of them, but a very popular one that many people have heard of is negative visualization. And what negative visualization can do for you is actually make you a calmer person, it can reduce anxiety, and it can create gratitude for the things you have. So negative visualization is to imagine a bad thing happening to you. So um, your car is stolen and you come to terms with that and you meditate on the idea of losing your car and you accept it. And when you come out of this meditation, or by meditation I just mean sitting there thinking about this, when you come out of it you actually develop a gratitude for your car, you have your car, but also it prepares you for the day that you will lose your car. Um, people do this on the thought of death, their own mortality, or the death of a loved one. Um, this can help create gratitude and a sense of urgency to appreciate life and appreciate the things that you have. Um, I don't actually recommend it to everyone as it can lead to rumination and overthinking and it can cause distress. But if it's something that sounds interesting and I'm, I know it's created gratitude for me, 
uh, it's worth giving it a try. There are three big names in Stoicism that is good to know. is Mox Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus. Now Mox Aurelius was the emperor of Rome. He's known as the last great emperor of Rome and he wrote The Meditations, which is my favorite book and the book I recommend to everyone. The next one is Epictetus. He was a slave who then became a teacher and his book, which is very highly recommended, is The Enchiridion. So last but not least is Seneca. He was a very successful writer amongst many other things and he wrote De Ira or the, On Anger, which is a book I've recently read quite a lot um, because I've been trying to learn about the emotion of anger. It, the book's all about anger and it really changed my perspective on the emotion. And I remember when I first learned in Stoicism that anger is bad, I had a lot of rebuttals and a lot of arguments to oppose this opinion. But after reading De Ira, um, I can say that anger is uh, very bad. It's really helped me become a calmer person, more, more peaceful, and, and also to understand my emotions better. Today we have authors like Massimo Pigliucci, Ryan Holiday and Donald Robertson that are doing wonders in Stoicism. They're writing great books. They're also putting out great content online if you want to check that out. And the great thing about these three authors is most of their content can be found online for free. I'll put their names in the, in the description where you can find them because they have great content. I love to listen to a lot of their podcasts and th that's probably my favorite thing to do is listen to podcasts. To summarize, Stoicism is a practical philosophy which helps guide us in life to not only be better, but to feel better and to live better, to worry less and be more compassionate. Through Stoicism, we can help make the world a better place. And as Aurelius said, I said this quote earlier on, what is good for the hive is good for the bear. So hopefully you have a brief understanding of Stoicism. Very brief, but it's probably enough to talk to someone about Stoicism. And also, when you go over to my Instagram, The Everyday Stoic, um, you have a better understanding of when I post certain lessons, certain quotes, um, you have a better understanding of where they are coming from and they might have a bit more impact on you. Yet hopefully you'll rec check out the books that I spoke of as they are a very good gateway into Stoicism, especially the meditations, which was my initial introduction in Stoicism. So I highly recommend it. So I'll be releasing many more of these videos going in depth on Stoicism. Um, so please feel free to subscribe as I will be posting many more of these and going way more in depth on many concepts you've heard today, um, go more in depth on individual Stoics such as Masonius Rufus, um, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus. I'll go way in depth on all of them so you'll get to learn a lot more. I'll also be sharing my own personal views on daily life, coping, coping through daily life using Stoicism as a guide. Um, I'm doing many interviews with Stoics and with people that follow Stoicism, sorry, um, such as the ones that are already up with Ethan Suplee, Amy Morin and Eddie Pinero and also Master Shihengi of the Shaolin Temple Europe. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and if anything, head over to the Instagram and become part of the community. I like it when everyone's talking in the comments and sharing their ideas on Stoicism. I think it's awesome that I can go into the comments and learn about Stoicism, learn new concepts or perspectives around the philosophy. It's just really great. So thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Zeno, for creating this beautiful philosophy that I'm now sharing. So have a beautiful day.